Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan. I'm the pharmacist here at MD Custom RX. We are a pharmacy that does not place big pharma at the center of what we do here. It's about functional medicine. It's about functional pharmacy. And in today's video, we are going to be discussing the benefits of quercetin, which is a very simple molecule. It's a flavonoid found in many different fruits and vegetables, and it is something, in my opinion, and hopefully with the research that I'm going through today, that I can prove to you that this flavonoid, this molecule that's found in onions, shallots, apples, tea, can be something that can have a very significant impact on your health. Let's get into today's content. If you stick with me to the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a story about my great-grandmother, Mary Cheslinski, came over to the U.S. from Poland, and I had a very interesting talk with my mom and dad last night, and was wondering about how Busha, as we called her, lived to 96 years old. So I will share that at the end of this video. One of the first health benefits that I want to go through with you on quercetin is allergies and asthma. I'll put a link reference up here on the screen here in just a moment that talks about quercetin and its ability to be a mass cell stabilizer. So that is something that again is really important I want you to take home is that quercetin can act as a mass cell stabilizer, meaning that if we get into asthma or allergy season, we're reacting to pollen or whatever it is that might be causing our allergy sy symptoms. Quercetin might be helpful in reducing that histamine load by stabilizing the mast cell and inhibiting that mast cell from releasing histamine into our system. There are not a lot of great studies on asthma and quercetin. There are a few, and there's a few animal studies that indicate or point towards the fact that quercetin might be helpful in reducing asthmatic symptoms. And that is thought to be believed by, again, reducing the instability of some of these immune cells that are creating inflammation in the body. The second health topic that I think health, that quercetin is beneficial for is cancer. Now, when we're looking at cancer and we're looking at quercetin, quercetin's acting in many different ways to help reduce the proliferation of cancer cells. So, Quercetin is coming in and it's acting as an antioxidant to these cancer cells. It hap happens to um, increase apoptosis or cell death, which is, of course, very important in cancerous cells. We want to clear those cancerous cells out of our system. Uh, and then also studies have been shown, and I'll put this up on the screen as well, is that there's studies that are looking at quercetin and how they allow those cancerous cells to become more reactive again to chemotherapy. So let's say a patient goes through chemotherapy treatment and maybe they go through a few rounds of that and the doctors are seeing that that chemotherapy is not as effective as it once was. We could potentially give that, that patient a dose or two or however long we, we may think is needed and that quercetin can take those cancerous cells and again, make them more sensitive again to that chemotherapy. Quercetin can act very similarly to methylene blue. We have a previous video on methylene blue, how methylene blue can work as an antioxidant, but also as an oxidant. It can give and receive electrons. Quercetin acts in a similar way in that if you pair it with vitamin C, which is a very important thing to do, by the way, act, again, as that antioxidant, but then get recharged, get the electron that it pulled away from the oxidative species and basically give it back to vitamin C so that quercetin can co go back and perform more functions in the body. So it's important to understand one of the main benefits of quercetin is this ability to, again, act as an antioxidant, but then also be recharged very simply by vitamin C to then go back out and receive more free radicals, taking them back to vitamin C and then so forth, passing that, passing that electron off to vitamin C. 
One other benefit with quercetin and cancer is there was a, and I'll show this on the screen, a randomized study that was done with quercetin versus placebo patients. And what this study ultimately found is that it reduced the risk of pancreatic cancer in the patients that received the quercetin. And as you may already know, quercetin is a very difficult uh, cancer to treat. And so, again, if there's somebody out there that might be struggling with pancreatic cancer or pancreatic cancer risk, I would highly encourage you to talk to your physician, your oncologist about, again, again, possibly adding quercetin to your supplement regimen. In cardiovascular disease, what's going on, the mechanism of action is what I'm really getting at, is quercetin can be beneficial at reducing platelet aggregation. So why is that important? Of course, when we have less sticky platelets in our body, there's less of a risk for heart attack, stroke, or we have a thrombotic event where we basically get a a clog, let's just put it plainly, of blood cells and inflammation. And again, if that occurs in the arteries of the heart, that's a heart attack. If it's you know going to the carotid artery we, or somewhere in the brain, we call that a stroke, of course. And so quercetin, and I think really the way I think of it, the big picture wise, if we're taking quercetin on a daily basis or a small amount of it through our diet, that in my opinion is the, the, the best way to go as far as reducing that cardiovascular risk. So there's a study, again, that I'll put this up here on the screen here in just a moment. There is some evidence that quercetin can help to lower blood pressure and to lower cholesterol, so that certainly uh, can be a, a beneficial factor as well. But again, the evidence isn't that great there. And quite honestly, there's a list of five, six, seven different agents. I won't get into those right now um, that I would, I would recommend over quercetin if somebody came into the pharmacy and was looking for a suggestion for a supplement to, to help uh, benefit their cardiovascular uh, function. The fourth health issue that I would like to cover with quercetin is diabetic uh, cataracts. So there was an animal study done years ago, and I will show this on the screen here uh, for reference, but it looked at uh, two things. One, it was able to, this was a rat model, delay the onset of cataracts and also to inhibit the enzyme that's responsible for developing cataracts in the first place. So there's certainly a lot more studies that could be conducted with quercetin and its possible benefit in reducing cataracts. So I don't want to extrapolate too much from this study, but it's certainly worth noting that, um, in my opinion, uh, if I were to look at this study and try to apply it to my own health, that, again, increasing my dietary consumption of quercetin probably isn't a bad thing to help uh, offset any type of potential of uh, diabetic uh, cataracts from developing. The fifth benefit to using quercetin is from its health benefits in protecting the uh, gastrointestinal tract mucosa. So there's numerous studies that have been referenced. I will put one of those up here on, on the screen that talks about uh, and these are animal studies, but looking at using quercetin to prevent basically alcohol-induced gastric ulcers. And also along those same lines, quercetin has been shown to, I'll have to put this in the show notes below, a link to this study, but showing that quercetin can help with uh, acid reflux or basically uh, esophagitis, inflammation of the esophagus, again, due to um, acid introduction from acid reflux disease. The last health condition I want to touch on briefly with quercetin is hypertension. And so the study I'm referencing here, again, I'll uh, put this up on the screen as well, was looking at just a single dose of quercetin, 200 milligrams to be exact, and showing its benefit in reducing blood pressure. Now, again, I don't want to read too much into this study. There's multiple other products I would recommend, magnesium, for example, fish oils, to help uh, reduce blood pressure. But quercetin, which, again, is, can be easily found in our diet, one single dose has been shown to help reduce blood pressure. And so the interesting thing about how this mechanism is working is it was actually shown to improve nitric oxide levels, which 
Dane Newville, one of the pharmacists here on staff. I will put a link to his video on nitric oxide, uh, either in the show notes or on the screen here. But it's interesting that quercetin can improve the benefits of uh, blood pressure by increasing nitric oxide levels in the body. So I want to share with you that story about uh, my Busha or Mary Cheslinski. She lived to be 96 years old. And the story I got from my dad last night was very interesting. And I didn't tell him I was doing a video on quercetin, but I was just starting to ask them, you know, what did you know about Busha and her diet? And, you know, just tell me something interesting about her. And he brought up the story of she would, um, on enough occasions, eat onion sandwiches, which sounds bizarre to me, but um, I think I'm going to give it a try. But, um, and how she would eat those uh, onion sandwiches. Um, I found that very interesting because onions, especially red onions, are one of the main vegetables out there with the highest concentration of quercetin. So I wonder how much of that actually played into her uh, longevity. Uh, I'd like to think quite a bit. Um, So there it is. Uh, If you're looking to increase your quercetin levels uh, naturally through diet, I would encourage you, well, I would fry up the onions with some some butter. Uh, Speaking of butter and frying up onions, one important thing about quercetin is it is also very lipophilic, and so it's fat-loving. It's better absorbed from a kinetic standpoint, pharmacokinetic standpoint, if you consume quercetin with a fatty meal. So fry up your quercetin, your fry up your onions, uh, your red onions preferably, but yellow would work too, uh, in some butter, some olive oil, and uh, generally speaking, I'm recommending typically about a half of an onion a day. So you may not gain a lot of friends that way. Your breath might stink, right? We all know the Uh, My wife doesn't like when I consume a lot of onions. It just permeates out of my pores. But um, hopefully with today's video, you've seen the benefits, some of the benefits of quercetin. Um, If you want to see more or hear more about benefits of quercetin, please put that in the show notes below. I can do a part two. There's about another five, six health benefits to quercetin that I did not get into today. Uh, There are some also some very interesting articles out there. Uh, with quercetin and um, SARS-CoV-2 virus. So I'm sure we're all aware of the interesting viruses that are surrounding our world currently. And uh, there's some very interesting studies on the antiviral benefits that quercetin can bring to the table. So again, thank you. And if you found value in today's content, I encourage you to share that with a loved one. Thank you.